hundreds more that are not federally recognized. And you go up into Canada, you're talking, you know, close to a thousand different native nations, indigenous people. And each one of these tribes, they actually have their own language. They have their own culture. They have their own way of life. They have their own societies. They have their own religions. They have their own way of doing things. And so one thing is in people, you know, we've got to understand that our way is not the one and only way to do things because there's other teachings, other places, and that's just having a respect, you know, for one another. But these drum groups, uh, you know, they're, they're critical to our culture, but that drum beat, I don't want you guys to understand how important that is and what it represents. There are old spaghetti westerns that they, that, that they uh, play on TV, uh, you know, those uh, black and white shows, and, uh, you know, there's a famous drum beat that everybody knows. There's a famous drum beat, and I, I, I guarantee you guys have heard it. The drum beat sounds just like this. Can you do that drum beat? You guys all recognize that? Well, we as Indian people have no clue what that is supposed to mean. We have no clue. And so for us, it's kind of comical because we're like, what? Who, who did they hire to, to, to beat that drum for them? Because that's not how these songs go. Um, you know, but again, that's a stereotype. And it's been put into movies. And so it's played over and over and over. So people really think that's a drum beat. But there is no such thing. I mean, I guess if there was, you'd be dancing off beat because there's a funny little dip in there at some point. And, you know, it, it's just, it's just not, not how our culture goes. And so, you know, if you understand what that heartbeat, this drum, and what it represents, when our children are still in their mother's womb, you know, they're constantly hearing that drum beat. They constantly hear that sound. And so it's comforting to them. And even me and my wife here, when our kids were born and they have their restless nights and they can't go to sleep, you know, we kind of come to the conclusion, well, you know, they, they want to hear something that's soothing to them. So uh, they're not in their mother anymore. They can't hear that drum beat. So what we did is we put them in the car, put them in the car seat and put on a, a powwow tape, powwow songs. And before we even went around the block one time, they're out, they're asleep. And so maybe a little trick that you guys might want to try, you know, with you youngsters if they're, they're being restless. But, you know, again, that's just what that heartbeat represents. And so uh, we got any Sooner fans here in the house? Sooner fans? All right. Any Oklahoma State Cowboy fans? All right. We got a couple. We got a few. We're always in the crowd. Thank all two of you for traveling around the state and supporting them. Uh, we got any Thunder fans in the house? All right, I believe this is our year, guys. This could be our year. Uh, I'm excited for that. But if you're ever sitting there and uh, you're watching the ball game, and uh, if you ever hear your heart make this certain kind of drum beat, you better call 911. <laughs> You're about to go into the cardiac arrest because your heart is not supposed to sound like that. And so just a little bit of education, a little information, you know, we always throw humor in there. As Indian people in our culture, if you know an Indian person, and if they don't tease you, then that means that they don't like you. Little secret, because we love to laugh. We love to enjoy each other. And so if they tease you, that means that they like you. And sometimes they might tease you too hard, but don't take it to heart. They're just trying to make you laugh and make everybody else laugh. And so with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our presentation here. Um, I wanna introduce our singers here. I don't wanna forget that fact is this is a uh, full metal jacket. Big and round of applause here. <laughs> Champion drum group here. You'll notice that they'll sing two different dance styles, two different styles of singing. They're singing Northern style, which is the high pitch, and southern style. There's not many drums that can do that. You're either a southern drum group or a northern drum group. But these guys are so talented, they're able to sing both styles. And you'll notice that. Higher pitch is northern, uh, lower pitch to southern. Um, but again, these songs are passed down orally from generation to, gener to generation. There's no song books. So when we call for a particular song, these singers, and we call them singers, we don't call them drummers, because anybody can beat a drum. It takes talent to be able to sing. I'd like to introduce you to the youngest of the group, which is Talo. This is Talo Gray. He is eight years old. Talo, turn around, wave to everybody. 
He's eight years old and he's in the third grade. Let's give him a round of applause. That is baby boy, baby brother. Next oldest would be Lily Mule. Lily, you're also in third? Third grade and she's nine years old, right? All right, let's give Lily a big round of applause. She's Kyla and Choctaw. Okay, next we have a uh, little sister over here, our big sister. This is Glory Grace. She is 11 years old and she is in the fifth grade and she's Cheyenne, Kiowa, and Ponca. Let's give her a big round of applause. And then last but not least, standing at six foot three inches tall is our baby girl Jaylee here. She is uh, 11, 12. I always got to wait for that confirmation. She's 12 and she is in the fifth grade or sixth grade. She's in the sixth grade now. And she, you can see I'm six foot and she's almost almost about to catch me. Um, they're actually gonna play in a basketball tournament, all in a basketball tournament tomorrow. So we might need to bring her birth certificate because they're gonna want confirmation of how old she actually is. But let's go ahead and let them showcase their dance. So let's give them an applause here as we showcase Men's Fancy and Women's Fancy Shaw.
All right, he's going to tell a story. Then he's going to tell a story as he's dancing, like I said, representing that, that Southern Plains where he's going to be going back and forth. And, you know, some say that they're looking for the tracks of, uh, uh, of an enemy, you know, hunting them. Some say they're looking for tracks of uh, prey, deer, antelope, uh, buffalo, something they could uh, bring back and provide nourishment for their family. But they tell that story as, as he dances, and at some point, you know, they may even signify that they found what they're looking for by a war cry or a holler. Uh, but they do it very gracefully, very gracefully, and so that, that's why this dance style is also commonly known as the gentleman's dance. So without further ado, let's give a big round of applause Mr. Denny Medicineberg with our men's Southern Street Dance. consider this a courtship uh, style of dance uh, where the individual would showcase what he could do with one hoop and so the original hoop dancer began with one hoop and he would uh, dance in and out of the hoop he would twirl the hoop throw the hoop in the air he would do all the type of stunts that he could do with one hoop and so as time went on other tribes they began to enjoy this style of dance and so they began to adopt it into the dance repertoire they begin to add more hoops so some dancers use maybe five hoops, which I'll be doing today. Some dancers dance with up to 100 hoops at one time, creating different designs and symbols of things you see in nature. Uh, this is a story about creation. Uh, and so the hoop dancer, he has the ability to be creative, uh, create his own designs, his own style. And so today you might see something you're familiar with that you might see in nature. So you might see an eagle, you might see a, an alligator, you might see a, a man on a horse, uh, you might see something contemporary such as Mickey Mouse. Um, and so the hoop dancer has the freedom, the, the ability to create his own designs and uh, routines. And so this is my routine, this is my rendition, the rendition of the hoop dance style. My name is Jay Neal. I hope you enjoyed here today. We're going to showcase a variety of style of Native American dancing, plain style dancing, and we'll give explanations of each style of dance. And so we are the Central Plains Dancers. Thank you. All right, as Jay prepares here, you guys notice the, the, uh, the, 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 the simple way that he makes this dance look easy. Uh, but champion hoop dancer will pass these hoops through each one of their body at some point or another. So again, use your imagination on what these designs that he can make with these hoops that he has here. So let's give him a big round of applause here as he prepares the men's hoop dance for you. Starting with one hoop, one hoop, showing you the moves that he's got with just one hoop. All while staying in time with the drum.
second hook. Hook number two. Um, hi everyone, my name is Ashley Lamont. I'm Absentee Shawnee and Oglala and Chitangu Lakota. I come from the Horn Cloud and White Buffalo Chief Tioche Bay, and I'm Deer Clan with the Absentee Shawnee Tribe. Um, yeah, I'm really excited and honored to share and showcase this dance with you today. Um, it, the jingle dress originated with the Malak's Ojibwe people in the early 1900s, and what had happened was a man's granddaughter had become really, really sick. And he had a dream, and in that dream he had a vision of this dress, and the spirits told him if he made this dress, and if his granddaughter danced in this dress, that she would become better. And so over time she did, he made this dress, and she did dance this dress, and she did become better. And so this is now a healing dance and a healing dress, and today there are different styles, both contemporary and old style, and some people carry fans, um, some people wear plumes, and some people wear feathers. Um, and some people don't use any of those things. So. Go ahead and turn it back over. All right, here they go, showcasing what's known as our women's jingle dress.
also like to introduce you to uh, uh, my beautiful wife. This is Holly Sue Gray. She is Ponka and Konkawa. She is also highly educated. She has three degrees. She most recently graduated from the University of Oklahoma this past May as well. And she is also a uh, breast cancer survivor. So let's give another big round of applause to Holly Sue Gray. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to them and let them explain a little bit about their dance style and their regalia. Good afternoon. Again, my name is Holly Sue Gray. My Ponca name is Inith Babe, which means one who embraces. Um, again, like my husband said, I'm a breast cancer survivor. So um, opportunities to dance and to showcase um, what it is that we do. And what we've been doing since we were young is um, it's... It's always fun, it's always great, and again, we like to educate you all on the things that you know take place in Oklahoma almost every weekend. Almost every weekend we are dancing somewhere here in the state. Sometimes we travel outside the state, but um, on to our regalia. Um, my sister Tony and I have on what's called a tea dress, and as you can see, it's in the shape of a T. Um, <clears throat> Um, this is a Tonkawa dress. Um, long ago, the Tonkawa women, they used to just wear um, the bottom dresses and uh, they would just wrap it around their, around their waist. And they would, um, uh, you know, Tonkawas, they were from uh, what's known as now Southern Texas, kind of by the um, uh, Mexico border. So it was very hot. So the women didn't wear tops. They would wear necklaces to cover themselves and their chest. Um, but as uh, time, you know, has went on, uh, you know, our dresses got, you know, full length. And uh, now that we don't have to use hides anymore, we can use pretty materials for the summertime, like Asian brocade. Um, what Miss Tony has on over here is a broadcloth, which is um, typically worn during the winter months. It's a very thick uh, wool, so it's, it's very, it can get very, very warm. But again, it's, it has its purpose for wintertime. Um, we both have our uh, leggings on. We carry a shawl on our arms, um, our purses, our eagle feathers. Uh, Miss Tony has on a, a crown, which represents royalty, because at one time she did represent her tribe as an ambassador. Um, um, many different organizations and tribes will have a tribal princess, and so if you ever go to a powwow, you'll see the princesses with their um, crowns and their banners on. Um, the way that we dance is very slow, very graceful, um, and um, we dance to every other beat of the drum, and I'm going to hand the microphone to Miss Tony if you want to add a little... Thank you. Good afternoon. Tony Sitok Niola Kon. Goi Ma Agda. I'm Kaiwa. My Kaiwa name is Aonma. It means beautiful feathers. It's a reference to the scissor tail feathers that we use in some of our fans. And we're happy to be here today. Uh, I was just kind of watching the kids play in the background, and that's what they enjoy doing. So we, uh, we let them learn just by doing and watching and um, and we enjoy coming together as a group and, and a, as a family to dance and share case, uh, showcase our dances with you. Um, I, I did hold a title, not our tribal princess. Um, I was a Kiowa cultural organization princess, and I also was Miss Haskell, so I held two titles. Um, but yeah, the crown is a more contemporary piece. If you look at older pictures of Kiowa women when they acquired beads through Czechoslovakia, through trade. Um, the, the beads were made into, fashioned into headbands. And so if you look at that, you can see the evolution of how that tiny headband turned into a crown. Over time, they started putting round medallions, rosette medallions in the front, and then it took the shape of the crown. So that's the origin of the crown. Um, we wear some, a few other items that are kind of distinct. For Kiowa women, we wear three uh, pouches on the right-hand side of the belt. And some, you'll see variations if you start, if you uh, pay close attention, you'll see these different distinctions with the, the regalia. Some of the women wear pouches on the back of their belt. Um, ours are always in the front on the right side. And there's a reason for that. All of those things had a, a utility back in the day, a historical day. And today we still wear them as uh, symbolic parts of the dress. And so what my grandma's always told me is that you don't take away from our outfits and you don't add to them. You just carry them on the way that um, the way you were taught, and so that's what I try to do um, in my regalia. And when I dress my girls Kiowa style, it's the same way. Um, some people call this this uh, thing that 
You can see it hits your right knee. I was told it hits your right knee when you dance. You should be able to feel that, that drag right there. Um, but some people say it, it um, represents a sword in some tribes. All of our stories are, are passed down verbally, and so there's some variations to this uh, origin of this piece. I was told that this is another, um, it was a horse whip at one time, and then it was also used to gather um, wood, so you could you know, pick up a wood in a bundle and you could wrap it up and hold it. And so everything that we wear had a, had a use um, and a reason, so just share that little bit of history that you probably won't read anywhere. This is Southern Traditional. All right, some say this is so beautiful, they call it poetry in motion. So this is our women's southern cloth, southern traditional. And so the fancy dance uh, began toward the end of the Wild West era. And some say the fancy war dance began around that same time as well. There's a story that uh, tells about that. Anybody ever heard of Buffalo Bill, Pawnee Bill? Uh, they did these Wild West shows and they would showcase um, different events and they would invite tribes to come out to uh, uh, to uh, showcase historical battles, historical events, and also to demonstrate some of these dances. And so, there the young men, they wanted to make it more exciting for the audience. They wanted to make it more flashier. And so they was uh, inspired when they saw this show horse out there in the arena. And that show horse was moving to the beat of the drum. And the show horse, when it's, uh, the drum sped up, the horse sped up. And when the, uh, the drum stopped, the horse stopped. And so it inspired these young men to create this style of dance that you see Talo and Cecil wearing the bustle of feathers on their back. And so these uh, war dancers here are going to showcase this very energetic style. Uh, some say that the top bustle represents the mane and the bottom bustle represents the tail of that show horse long to go, as well as the furry angoras around their feet. And so then years later, the women would not be outdone. They would showcase their style of fancy dancing. And so they would take off the shawls off their arm, put it around their shoulders, and they would do intricate and fast footwork, also being graceful as well. That's why it's also known as the butterfly dance. And so we're gonna showcase this uh, final exhibition of our dancers. This is the fancy dance.
ਕੀ ਸੱਚੀ ਭਗਤ ਦੇ ਰਾਮ 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 ਰ